Hey, my name is Mark Hoffman. I am the uh, uh, small food extension specialist at NC State University. And today we will talk about soil and uh, uh, fertility of strawberries, especially over the pre-plant phase. And um, this is gonna be a pretty packed uh, and compact talk. So bear with me for the next 15 minutes. Um, we will cover a lot of ground in the next 15 minutes. And this is our agenda here. We will first talk about soil and how important it is. We will focus a lot on the organic portion of the soil. And then we will go into how do you test pH adjustment, very important. And then a little bit about uh, soil test interpretation. And then we will in jump into pre-plant fertilizer options. And then also show a little bit of the research we're doing here. So, but first let's talk about soil and how important it is. And as a good farmer, you know that soil is, is very important. And it is important for several reasons. One of the reasons is because it contains a lot of microorganisms, which, which do con, uh, contribute to the balance between uh, plant interface and soil interface. It also contains a lot of humic uh, substances. It contains, contains minerals, which, which can bind nutrients. So soil is a, very, a healthy soil is extremely important to produce a healthy crop. And um, we don't go into details about this, but this, this, uh, this graph shows very good how uh, below and above ground parts of a plant are interacting, and that is no, non, uh, not others in, in a field crop. And uh, a healthy soil contributes to a healthy crop. So we are focusing a lot on the organic part of the soil, but soil is made from two different components, organic components, which are degradating and minerals, which are coming from the actual geological uh, below ground uh, surface. So um, we're looking at the organic matter here and then and, and, and um, also on some of the complex structures um, within the organic matter. So organic matter can be a lot. Organic matter doesn't have to be very complex. Organic matter actually, in fact, contains a lot of smaller breakdown products, chemically very small products like DNA or proteins or carbohydrates or fatty acids uh, uh, or even humic acids, which are relatively small. Some of them can be used as plant, can be taken up by the plants. A lot of them are used by microorganisms, but they don't produce complex, long lasting structures. A portion of organic matter, however, is humus, and that is usually built out of plant debris, usually things like lignins or very complex structures, which are hard to break down. They will uh, form a structure or a base for like very complex humus structures in the soil, which are slowly degradating and do have high implications for soil health later on. And this is really hard to summarize, but I kind of made like a little graph here, uh, and you have in, in your soil, you have a lot of fast degrada degradating substances, like for example, your chemical fertilizer, if it's not a slow release fertilizer, it's degradating pretty fast. And we'll show a graph about this later, as well as proteins, carbohydrates, also animal wastes and things are usually faster degradating than composts or even humus. And uh, humus is extremely important for plant health and soil health. And um, you, I, I just, want to show you here a very complex overview. This is a, a, an example for humic, for humus portion of it. Um, and you can see it, see that's a very complex uh, uh, chemical structure. And those usually appear in chains, which produce very large molecules in the soil, which then can aggregate with minerals or with other organic substances and build very complex, larger particles in the soil. Organic, but organic matter can also be very small particles. For example, this, this is a fatty acid uh, molecule. That's a very small molecule. And organic matter, if you get your organic matter report back, really contains both of that humus and the smaller portions of your soil, uh, uh, smaller molecules of the soil. So those small molecules are not able to build those larger complex structures and are usually degradating way faster than a humus structure, which can be in the soil for years and can build up organic matter and soil health over several years. So humus is very, uh, ha has big implications for long-term soil health. Even with, if you fumigate, humic substances can survive that and can still build up uh, uh, more over uh, the years. 
But humus has a lot of other implications as well. It promotes usually growth of beneficial microorganisms and uh, also improves soil water holding capacity as well as can aggregate with soil minerals, which is the non-organic part of a soil, which holds usually a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, nutrients, but humus particles themselves are also capable of holding nutrients. And they can also have a pH management because they, they can serve as a buffer, a soil temperature, soil evaporation. So you, uh, humus content is very important for to build up a healthy soil. Uh, if you are striving to look uh, to build up healthy soils, long-term sources are composts uh, and cover crops, for example. The combination of both will provide a higher nitrogen rate in, in the beginning, but also contribute to higher uh, carbon rates um, to build up higher CN ratios in the soil. So organic matter and humus is one of the most important parts of your soil uh, health. If we talk about strawberries, another very important part is the soil pH. Um, the reason for that is, uh, is that soil pH affects highly the availability of plant nutrients. As you can see here, if, you, if we go into like a lower pH, like 5.5 or lower, we will see a lot of deficiency in the plant. So for strawberries, we really strive to have a, 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 P, a target pH between 6.0 and 6.5. And to get there, in a lot of areas, you will have to apply lime. Lime usually takes a while to, to uh, change the pH of the soil. So you cannot apply lime one week and then the next week you, you, you plant your strawberries uh, or you, you, you raise your beds. That's not possible. So lime, lime application usually should happen a couple of months before you raise your beds. Um, so to do this, soil testing is pretty important. It's very important that you take the soil test in the correct way. Uh, we recommend a zigzag scheme across a uniform area of your field. So if you have, for example, in this, in this example, you have three different soil types or three different areas where you, where you see different wheat growth that usually indicates that there are differences below ground. So you would, you would sample all those three areas in a zigzag scheme. You take plenty of samples and combine those to a combined sample and send those to, to a testing service in North Carolina it, that goes through the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Other states might be different testing services. So this process is very important. You, if you don't take soil samples in this, in this, in this way, you, you, have, uh, you will have the problem that you might have get, get to low or too high uh, soil pH values and you're not applying enough lime and you will see differences in your field later, and you will see uh, problems in your field later. We recommend to, to sample at least an eight inches depth because uh, that usually is the amount of soil which you need for bed shaping. And then we send it to the uh, NCDA, as I said, in other, in other uh, uh, areas, you will have another service. You will get back a soil report like this. And then in this soil report, there are several indicators which you, which you will see. There is your, there is your organic matter in there. There's your um, salt levels in there, but the most important part is really your pH and the amount of lime which you will have to apply. And in our case here, we have to apply 0 0.5 tons per acre uh, to raise the pH to 6.0 in this case. Liming will go, uh, we usually use dolomitic lime to also add some magnesium. We recommend to incorporate it as, as deep as possible and also it takes time, so incorporate it early enough. And then in the best case scenario, you would take a soil sample later again to see if your pH has changed or not. The uh, lime requirement test value, S&P value is pretty important. You will find those values on your lime products that will, uh, that will allow you to, to calculate how much lime, how much of the product you will have to apply, get to the actual ton per acre rate, which is recommended um, in the test. We talk about pre-plant fertilizer. Also, your soil test is very important to, to understand how much pre-plant fertilizer you want to you want, you want to apply. We usually plow a lot of nitrogen, 60 pounds per acre of nitrogen is what is recommended for a, 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 a cam, a Chandler and Camarosa. We usually, the potassium and the phosphorus amount 
is based on your soil test recommendations. So you really have to take your soil test and look at your recommendations and then decide whether or not you want to apply phosphorus or potassium. Um, it, on top of the nitrogen, often boron is, is applied. Sometimes sulfur is applied. Again, you find a lot of recommendations on strawberry fertility in a relatively new uh, template, which was uh, 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 released in 2015 by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. The link is here. And um, typical strawberry fertilizer, full spectrum fertilizers are used a lot uh, in, in, in strawberry production here in North Carolina. Um, ammonium sulfate, potassium nitrate, deammonium phosphate are also used as well as potash. And then uh, for sulfur uh, content, uh, also polysulfate or K-MAG are, are, are pre-plant fertilizers that are mixed in to increase the sulfur content. Again, with boron, be careful because you can get boron toxicity. Again, look at your soil test and see what uh, the boron levels are. Um, so now we did some research here in North Carolina to see whether or not a high rate of nitrogen is actually making a big difference on the strawberry crop in, in, uh, in, in, in spring. And we applied several rates of, of pre-planned fertilizer with high rates of nitrogen. We used the 6618 full spectrum fertilizer here. And, um, and you can see here that there were much higher rates, uh, to total nitrogen rates in the first couple of inches of the bed uh, at the beginning after, after planting. But even one month later, those rates were all very similar, no matter whether or not you had like high nitrogen rates applied. We had like 1200 pounds per acre. Um, that's the green line all the way down to zero, which is the, the light blue line. And you can see here that even a month later, they were all pretty similar. So, so re our research indicates that it is more important to, to develop a, a slower, uh, to develop a system where you, where you can have slow release fertilizers, all higher CN ratios in your soil so that you do have more capacity of the soil to hold uh, nutrients over time when it's actually needed. Um, that could be reached with organic amendments. And that is just like food for thought here because there is no research on this for the Southern region, at least um, like things like components, uh, compost and high C content uh, com uh, components like cover crop and other sea sources can increase the CN ratio uh, of your soil or animal waste and composts in combination with conventional fertilizers. There, is, there, is, there are some growers who do that or uh, even the mix of k to like increase the sulfur content, compost and animal waste and conventional uh, fertilizers can also, are also options which we cannot provide information on because there is no research, but there is anecdotal knowledge uh, over the region. So that is it from me. Uh, I think the takeaway here is uh, always think about your soil, even in an annual system with fumigation and plastic culture and all the whistles and bells the soil health is still a very important part of your system and should not be neglected. And with that, I thank you and will be there for questions and answers. Thank you very much.